Okay, so, I know a lot of you already know this, but some people might need clarification, and it goes beyond just motion graphs. So we're gonna do notes on a motion graph review. So anyway, um, the important thing to know is there are three of them, and they all are with respect to time. That means that with respect to time, that time is your input, it's the thing you're looking at, and then you're gonna get an output based on that. So it's kind of like a function. So your horizontal on all of these is time. Not all physics graphs have a horizontal axis or um, your input that is time. Sometimes it's position. Sometimes it might be something weird. But we're going to deal with just your basic motion graphs, which are essentially kinematics. So let's start off with position. That is x, like the position on a pirate map, and it is measured in meters. So let's say that you have a position versus time graph. So you have an object that goes up in the air, so it's going pretty fast, so the dots would be far apart, and they get closer together as it stops to turn around, and then velocity would be zero at the top because it stops to turn around, so it's on the way up, and then I'm just going to kind of draw it kind of ghosted. These would be right on top of each other, but I'm just kind of draw it next to it. It's going to take the same path on the way down, because this object, there'd be no air resistance, it'd be in free fall. Okay, so your graph would look like this. Let's say this is the midpoint where it stops to turn around. A parabola, just like that. All right, and right here, see at that very instant, it would be like the slope is zero. And that would be where it turn around. And if you notice, your slope starts off really steep. It slows, it slowly gets flat, and then it gets steeper again. See, it's just like further apart, faster, stops, turns around. I know this is review, but just want to make sure. So that is your position versus time graph. All right. Now let's look at the next one, which would actually be a graph of what's happening here. And that is your velocity versus time graph. And velocity is a vector measured in meters per second. Marker's kind of smudgy. That's meters per second. Let's look at the velocity versus time graph of this. Your velocity starts positive and it's really, really steep. So it's really high. And it gradually approaches zero. And then it gets really, really steep again, but it's pointed negative. This is gonna be the, let's make this the midpoint and then let's make this your, it's kind of crooked, but let's make this the time final. Okay, so right here we know that your velocity, which is the slope over velocity time graph, is zero. See, because it stops at the top. So that means it's going to have to cross right here. Here you know it's really at its most positive. So that would be right here. And here it's going to be, should be the same. It's not perfect the way I sketched it. But it's the most negative. So that would be probably something, it would be the same amount. I'm just sketching these, not plotting these, so it should be pretty easy. I might have not measured that perfectly. No, that's pretty good. That's zero. So that is your velocity versus time graph. Now, <clears throat> the slope of this one is acceleration, and your slope is the same everywhere because it's a straight line. So that is a uh, negative slope. Acceleration is meters per second squared, and this is just straight negative. Should get the ruler. It would be actually negative 10 if we're on Earth, which we're assuming we are. So that is your acceleration versus time graph. Let's get into why this is. Well, for your first one, let's look at the slope, which is rise over run. Okay, your rise is, that would be changing what's going this way. Changing up and down over, changing side to side, basically. Changing vertical over changing horizontal. So that would equal change in x over change in, or position, change in position over change in time, which you should know is velocity. 
A way you can check this, don't put it equal to this, you can also do this just with the units if you know your units really well. See, you could go meters over seconds, and that matches up with your velocity. So that's good, and hey, look, meters per second, velocity, that's your next graph. All right, so for this next graph, let's do the same thing. I'm not gonna write out rise and run and all of that. This marker's no good. Okay, so slope would just be change in, if you think about it, over a change in something else. So you're changing your up and down velocity over change in time. And hopefully you know that that is acceleration. Okay, and look at the way look at the units. You've got meters per second divided by seconds. That gives you meters per second squared. Hey, that's acceleration. All right, I will tell you this. The slope of acceleration is nothing you need to worry about in algebra-based physics. It's something called jerk, but you would do it the same way. It's change in acceleration over change in time, but you really need calculus to do it correctly. It's kind of like um, what you get when you get whiplash, but y'all don't need to be super worried about that. So this covers slope. Now let's talk about area. The area would be the area between your horizontal axis and your actual slope or curve or whatever you want to call it. So let's look, and to do that, that's like just like you find like the area of this box, if you like. Length times width, or however you want to do it. Well, in this case, that would be acceleration times time. So area would be, let's see, I guess you could just say like your up and down, your vertical times your, I'll just put parentheses, times your horizontal. And really it's probably change in, but it is change in both of them, but traditionally just kind of convention in physics, you only put change in, and remember delta means change in, change in uh, the second one, your input, your horizontal. So that would be acceleration times change in time. And what is that? Let's look at the units. You got meters per second squared, and you're gonna multiply by seconds. Hey, look, that cancels out. That's meters per second. That's, oh my gosh, velocity. Let's try the one above it. See, on this one, the area would be this. Hey, those two are like the same, but like, in One's positive and one's negative, huh? Okay, well, let's see if I can find a place for this. I'm gonna put this down here. Area, no, area would be velocity times change in time. And let's look at the units. So that's meters per second. Hopefully you can see this. Meters per second times second. Hey, that's meters, so guess what that is? That is just your change in position, or also known as displacement. Oh look, here's that. Now we'll tell you, not everything has, um, not everything's slope has a meaning, not everything's area has a meaning. Position versus time, it's area has no meaning. So this is the motion graph. Um, I do want to show you this can apply to other things. Oh yeah, these two would cancel each other out, so its displacement would be zero. So yeah, that makes sense. It ends up on the ground. Here, one more thing I'll show you. 